Folks, we got a good one for you today. This is a Coyote CX2510, loader model Coyote KL2510, all right? So oftentimes, you'll see loader models that are used on various tractor models, okay? So same loader model on various tractor models. Now, I feel like it'd be good to compare this tractor against something else. And so something else that is basically the same size is going to be the John Deere 2025R. And I like to pick on that model because I don't like that model very much. I know some of you out there have the 2025R and it serves the purpose well for you, but I'd still like to use that as a comparison point. And uh, like it or love it or hate it, that's what we're using today. So I'm using that for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, because the subcompact is not the right model. They have a CS line that is their subcompact in Coyote and John Deere has a 1025, the one series, the 1025R and the 1023E. This is a step up from that. Um, and Coyote and the 2025R is a step up from that in the John Deere line. They have the same size tires, all right, the 12 by 16.5 on the backside and corresponding fronts on there. Now this one is running R14s, which I believe you can get for the 2025R as well. Uh, we showed you some bigger Coyotes recently that have bolt-on center hubs on the back of, uh, on the rear wheels, I should say. Now these don't have a bolt-on center hub, they just have a welded hub. It is still offset. I like to point this out, this center plate or the center hub is offset, so you can have a wide and a narrow position uh, with your rear tires. Same thing with the fronts actually too, and uh, interesting note as well, you can flip around one of the front tires um, to get additional traction if you're doing a lot of loader work in wet conditions to get um, going forward and backwards better traction and then reverse the tire back the right way when you're done with that. So anyway, let's start up front here and we'll work our way around. I am going to look up some specs and give those to you at the end. Um, if I can remember some of them while we're doing this, I'll, I'll tell you those too. But I do know that this loader lifts around 400 pounds more than the, 10, or than the 2025R. So you have about 400 pounds more lift capacity and you're gonna lift it about 16 inches higher with this Coyote compared to the 2025R. So that is pretty significant on a smaller tractor. Um, it does make it even more important to have more weight, okay? Not just machine weight, but ballast weight on the backside too. And so this machine does weigh about 500 pounds more than the comparable 2025R with a cab on it, okay? So the 2025R, you can get a Mauser cab on there, but it is heat only. You can't get air conditioning. Um, the only other tractor, I believe that's in this frame size that you can get air conditioning on is gonna be the Kubota, formerly the B2650, and now um, the Kubota LX2610, which is slightly bigger yet. So this is, as far as I know, about as small as you can go and still have a, a cab with, with air conditioning in there. Um, somebody posted a comment on a short that I put out that, that this is a big piece of junk like just, a, it's ridiculous and a piece of junk. And I was like, why? And his uh, comment was about how this can't run air conditioning. And I was like, well, the Kubota runs air conditioning and it's been out for like a decade or more, you know? I mean, it's, it's doable. So he never used it. It was just a, a weird comment, but this has AC and it works. This has been, this series has been around for a while. Okay, so it's, it's working well. Uh, let's talk about the loader some more. Skid steer quick attach. Well, even before that, the bucket, all right? I, I, love, I love the Coyote buckets. I, I don't like the standard duty John Deere buckets. They're chintzy, they're cheap. John Deere can afford to do better on their standard duty bucket. Um, but this has a, a big rolled edge on here. There's actually a reinforcement plate that's underneath here too that's gonna give extra rigidity and strength to that top rail. Um, bolt on tooth bar or a cutting edge down here on the bottom too. So it's pre-drilled, all right, for that tooth bar. It's not gonna come standard with a tooth bar, but this one does. This is for sale on our website. And then reinforcements on the side that you can see down here too. Um, so to, to keep those sides from, from wrinkling too much, but standard skid steer quick attach, all right? So whether it's a, a little tractor like this or a big, huge skid steer, they actually use the same size plate. Dimensionally, it's the same, right? now. You have a big skid steer, you're gonna use attachments that are way too heavy for this small tractor, but in theory, they'll hook up just the same. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, 
We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. A little bit more about the loader. It is gonna be a quick park loader. You can see down, down here, this is a, a stand, okay, you pull these stands out, very similar concept to Kubota, to Mahindra, to LS, to everybody else that's out there. It's a very, very common setup that's on these loaders with that stand. Then you pull a couple of pins up in the top of the um, loader to release it and, and set it down. This is a bucket level indicator right here, all right? So it's adjustment adjustable down here where you can change the, the height of it if you have different attachments like a snow pusher, pallet forks, the bucket, and if they all have a different level when they're on the ground, you can make that adjustment there. Um, Chris over here showed them the, uh, the quick disconnect. So here's their quick disconnects. These are all Pioneer Ag fittings right there. Out of the way right behind the tire. These do seem to hang down a little bit. They're all wrapped together. Probably the you know, just about the lowest point on the tractor there. So that's, I don't really see what you could do about that unless you got some, maybe you could rotate these fittings 90 degrees roughly and have it come out a little bit. So maybe it would like swing it here and up, still be behind the tire, but raise that up a little bit. I can see that being doable. I do think a lot of tractors could really use an improvement. My big Kubota has uh, some good protection around this area, but I can see making a guard just to kind of block off that area uh, nicely. That's, that's something you could have a local fab shop do too, or maybe there's an aftermarket company that makes something, I don't know. Uh, a little bit about the cab. Again, full AC and heat in there. You have mirror standard. This one has a front wiper, uh, front work lights. Is this door unlocked? Nope, that door's locked. Rear work lights, rear wiper, here's your antenna. Okay, this one doesn't have a radio. Most of these don't have a radio. And, and honestly, I said something about this in a recent video, I never use the radio that's inside there. You can add one of the knockout plates in there, it's got the speakers, has the antenna, you can plug one in, but I just use headphones or Bluetooth earmuffs or something and uh, listen to my music or audio books that way. Toolbox on the back, fuel, uh, washer fluid. Okay, something that's great. All these machines have standard. It's gonna be an external three-point control back here to raise and lower. Uh, rear remote is standard as well. So you can add a hydraulic top link onto that or you can put a multiplier on, maybe mount that right here. And then you can have a hydraulic top link. You get a three-point blower. You can get the chute rotation, all sorts of stuff. Um, get a top and tilt if you have a multiplier, uh, everything. You know, get those from Summit Hydraulics. Save 5% with code GWT. Uh, standard category one three-point hitch, 540 RPM rear PTO, draw bar. Somebody out there, if you have this model, let me know if you can get upgradable uh, sway bars down there, if they have the telescoping ones or not. I know you can on the larger series of Coyotes. I'm just not sure if you can on the CX. Um, this is gonna be an auxiliary electrical port if you wanted to add more work lights or if you had something else you wanted to hook up to it, you could do that. So uh, there's no triangle on here. Looks like maybe that, well, some of them have triangles that are mounted up on one of these little brackets. Maybe you could put the triangle right back there, but it doesn't have that on there now. Anything else on the outside? Well, let me see if I can open up that door too, get both these doors opened up. There we go. So similar to the bigger coyotes we've shown you, I really like this. This bar that goes all the way around, good for a grab handle to grab it no matter where you're at. Add some strength and rigidity to the door. And I didn't even realize it on the first one that we had that it was there. So it's not like it's obstructing, obstructing the, the view or anything like that, but uh, both doors, unlike um, the John Deere's, well, maybe the Mauser cab on the 2025R has has pistons on both doors, but um, I know that the factory OEM cabs on the larger John Deere's don't have pistons on both doors. So this door over here just wants to like swing closed on its own all the time. Kind of annoying, but uh, I am six foot three, 200 pounds for reference, okay? Uh, this machine has about 175, 180 hours on it couple years old, still has factory warranty. Really nice shape, you can see plastic still on the seat. I mean, clean, everything is where you need it to be. This one has armrests. Last couple we've had didn't have armrests. I don't know if they're standard 
or not, but this one has them. I like that a lot. I don't think armrests get in the way. Some guys were saying, ah, I don't want the armrests. They get in the way. I'm like, what are they getting in the way of? It makes it a lot more comfortable. You can see that armrest there, loader joystick here, super, like, perfect position. All right. Uh, let's take a look on this fender manual. So we've got a high-low range, all right? So two range, just like the 2025R, so nothing different there. You go one series up in the Coyote and you're into a three range. You go one series up into the full frame, two series with John Deere, you're still in a two range. So uh, two range comparable, high-low. This has mid and rear PTO. That's what these two separate handles are for here, all right? Um, auxiliary outlet, USB, 12 volt, pick and choose there storage locking rear differential oh look at that wait no what is that no that's our that's our two and four wheel drive right there here's the locking rear differential right next to it i thought they had a, a special handle on there uh pedal on there for the locking rear diff but that's fine uh let's see now oh i did this i did this a couple of weeks ago i think this is the brake here but then they've got a, a clutch to actually engage your pto like you just push, you push the clutch in. I think it was this one. It was either this one or this one. I'm, I'm, I'm not turning it on at the moment, but one or the other, you push it in to, to engage which PTO you want um, on there. We have lights, all of our light controls, which is typical, turn signals, got a horn, flashers, uh, tilt steering. I can't remember, what the heck was that? Yeah, that was tilt steering. Lock it back down there. Yeah, the flashers, the cruise control, throttle, okay, up and down. Show them that display. Can you see that display there, Chris? Nice display. See what... Lights up nice. A little backlit there. 178.7 hours at the moment. Uh, parking brake, so that's about it on, on this side. We got, well, I'll show them this up here. We got the HVAC controls, nice and convenient. Wow, I didn't realize there's a ton of vents. You got two vents on this side, two here, two here, two more here, nothing down low. Everything's up high, which is fine, but that's a lot of vents, that's great. Uh, windshield visor, dome light. Again, your speakers are back here. Now this rear window, Pops right, right open like that. Good visibility out there anyways. You have, also have a little window right here so you can actually see down, like directly down to the 3.2. Convenient. Honestly, it's a, it's a great little tracker, man. I mean, it's knocking the socks off the 2025R. Um, so loader joystick, three-point raise and lower remote control, you know, for the rear remote that we had back there. So you just move that one or the other. Got your lights front and rear wipers, defrost. Yeah, did we ever look at that Kubota? I don't think the Kubota had defrost on the rear window. I just think that's so cool. Uh, cup holder over here. Nice floorboard. I, I've got the seat back as far as I can go. This is a, it doesn't say on here anywhere, I don't see, but I think it's, a, oh it does. Yeah, it's a grammar seat, which is pretty common. My Kubota's got the same grammar seat. These are nice seats, nice suspension seats. Um, Adjust it how you want to. Not much to say there. But yeah, so this tractor's still heavy. I was scooping, show them that sand pile there, Chris. I was scooping up sand out of that pile there, and this tractor's still, even though it's 500 pounds heavier than the 2025R, it still needs ballast weight. I, I, I was just scooping it up just to see how it did, do a, a, a few scoops there and, and move it around. But you still want to have weight on the back side of this tractor. I mean, I'd put a weight rack and eight suitcase weight, 70 pounders. I load these tires up and fill them um, because the machine weight alone isn't enough. I mean, I consider it like a bonus 500 pounds of weight. Weight's not cheap. So it's it's good to have the extra weight, but the fact that you can also lift about 400 pounds more and you're lifting it higher means you need to consider that weight even more to be set up safely. Uh, comment, we'll close this up. Comment couple comments I think maybe is that this tractor looks goofy and um, I think that because it looks like it's all cab there's so much cab 
and there's probably some truth to that. I don't know what you're supposed to do about it. If you want a smaller tractor and you want a cab, then that's kind of what you get, right? So um, for me, more about operator comfort. This winter, for example, I'm running all cab equipment. <laughs> I'm not doing any open stage equipment. I want a cab for everything. I want heat in the wintertime. I, I love a cab in the summertime too. I love being out of the dust, out of the bugs, out of the allergies, out of the sun. Um, you can get a lot more work done for a lot longer and a lot more comfort. And yeah, it is, uh, it's, you're paying for comfort when you're doing that. Um, but for me, I've been gravitating more towards cab tractors just because I like them. It's a big cost decision though, right? Not getting a cab, getting an open station can pay for an attachment or two, or maybe three or four, depending on what size machine you're getting. But it's a trade-off to consider. And, and if you're gonna have a tractor for five, 10, 15, 20 years, well, then you can spread that cost out, that extra cost out over five, 10, 15, 20 years, and, or even divided by months, right? And, or the hours you're gonna put on it, or whatever it is. And still, at the end of the day, when you're gonna go ahead and sell that tractor, you're gonna recoup the same proportional amount of money. Uh, back when you resell it again too. So, <laughs> so it looks, you know, it depends on how you want to look at it. There's trade-offs for everything. If having a cab is going to make you want to get more work done or be able to get more work done in different conditions, then there's a big benefit there too. So uh, beyond that, I think that's about it. I'll probably look up a few more specs to show you like on the three point, uh, on the three point hitch lift capacity. I feel like that was another four or 500 pounds too. Um, engine size, actually, this has an 87 cubic inch displacement engine. The 2025R has a 77 cubic inch displacement engine, so there's another big difference there, you know. Um, I think typically they say the bigger displacement, what is it, the bigger displacement, the better the fuel economy. It runs, it runs at lower RPMs and better fuel economy, I don't know, Some, somebody out there. Fill me in on that. There's, there's some sort of a, a correlation to fuel economy, engine RPMs, displacement, torque, you know, all that stuff. But um, you guys out there will know that. But yeah, I think that's about it. Great value, okay? These Coyotes are running typically substantially cheaper than a similar John Deere or Kubota. And I like John Deere and Kubota. I like most of their models a lot. Um, I like to have fun with the 25, 25R and... Uh, some of you guys out there follow my channel, you're aware of that. It's all in good fun. Beyond that, if you want to get more information on this tractor, go to goodworkstractors.com. If you want to see what other tractors we have, maybe you want something bigger, maybe this one's sold by the time you see this video, see what else we have to offer. And if you're looking for attachments for the front end loader or the three point hitch, well, we sell and ship all this stuff nationwide every day of the week. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Taking a look under the hood. Again, I love the one piece design. Man, it's been a little while since I've seen a 2025R. I, I believe it's just like the 1025R where it's got just like the top of the hood that picks up and then it's got two removable side panels uh, for back here. But then on the front, it's got a big shroud that is not removable. So I like this design better. A lot of tractors have this design. And like the older, some of the older John Deere models have a, a hood a bonnet like this that opens up as a single piece too, which is, I think, the smart way to do it. Hey, we got Tom back. I uh, decided to top dress my entire driveway with crushed limestone. I'll show you guys a video on that at some point, but we did that limestone parking pad back here and I just absolutely love the look of it. So running crushed limestone along the whole driveway too. Uh, anyway, battery access right up front here. Really nice, convenient. I mean, easy access to the air filter. You know, that's one of the reasons people say, hey, I don't wanna I don't want to remove my loader. Well, again, if you had to do major service, you can take that loader off and have even better access right up here. Um, now, I did look up some specs, and uh, yes, 87 cubic inches for this displacement, running at 2,600 RPMs. The 2025R, 77 inch CI, running at 3,200 RPMs, all right? And so, I think, based on that, this hypothetically would get better fuel economy. I don't know. You guys tell me. All right, so now this one actually goes a little bit slower. 10.7 miles per hour versus the uh, the 2025R. I think it went, what, 12.3. 12, 12 so the 2025R can, in high range can go a mile and a half an hour 
faster than, than this guy here, but um, three-point lift capacity on the uh, the 2025R, 24 inches out from the ends, all right, which is like where a usable attachment would be, like further out, is 882 pounds on the 2025R. Listen to this, 1,203, 24 inches out on the Coyote, all right? Significantly more lift capacity there. Total pump flow, 11.3 gallons on the Coyote. Total pump flow on the 2025R, seven. It's like more than 50% more pump flow on this tractor. That's significant, that's a big deal, especially in tractors that don't have a lot of hydraulic flow to begin with. What else did you guys wanna know? Loader, yeah, well, let's, let's just confirm that loader lift capacity on here. Now, I should point out that you can, this has mid PTO, so you can get a belly mower if you wanted to on here. You can then get a front mount snowblower too. Folks think that you need a front PTO to run a front mount snowblower, and that's not true. Snowblowers, for most manufacturers, actually run off of the mid PTO. So there's a long PTO shaft that goes from up here there's like a carrier bearing that it fits in and runs back and ties into the mid PTO that the same PTO that your mid mount mower would run off of or your belly mower would run off of. So um, that's just food for thought there. So uh, 2025R lifts 750 pounds to 72 inches to like, to like right here. It'll lift 750 pounds to 72 inches. The KL2510 Lifts 1,092, let's just give it the eight pounds, say 1,100 pounds to 88 inches. 88 inches, seven foot, four inches. 16 inches taller, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds more. That's a big deal. So anyway, you guys do what you want with that information. I think those are significant numbers. And on top of the fact that you're gonna be paying less for this machine. Has a twin touch pedal, just like the 2025, 2020, 2020, 20, the 2025R has. AC, more lift capacity, loader three point, heavier. You tell me.